So <clears throat> I, I, I just wanted to share with you really quick. Isaiah 6, this is what uh, the worship team was meditating on this morning because I wanted us to bring into a place where we are not here to receive, but we are to give all our praises, all our thanksgiving, and everything that is within us to God this morning, this day. Amen? And so let me just read to you in Isaiah 6. We can start in yeah, verse 1. Um, this is the Passion Translation. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I clearly saw the Lord. He was seated on his exalted throne, towering high above me. His long flowing robe of splendor spread throughout the temple. Standing above him were the angels of, of flaming fire. In a different translation, they are the seraphims. Each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces in reverence. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two wings, they flew. And one called out to another, saying, Holy, holy is the Lord God, commander of angel armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The thunderous voice of the fiery angels caused the foundations of the thresholds to tremble as a cloud of glory filled the temple. Then I stammered and said, Woe to me, I'm destroyed. Don't as a simple man, for my words are tainted, and I live among people who talk the same way. King Yahweh, commander of angel armies, my eyes have gazed upon him. Then out of the smoke, one of the angels of fire blew to me. He, he had in his hands a burning coal he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, the burning coal from the altar has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the Lord saying, Whom shall I send to my people? Who will go to represent us? I spoke up and said, I will be the one. Send me. And I wanted us to take into a place where here the seraphims, the angels with flaming, of flaming fire, were calling out to one another. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, commander of angel armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And what I wanted to point out here is that the angels, the seraphims, were calling out to one another. And, and if that is us, it is each one of you calling out to one another the holiness, the glory of God, his majesty, his kingdom come to be here on earth. So, what I'm trying to get to is that, yes, we are here to worship God. Yes, we are here to adore Him and to, to just love Him with everything that's within us. But what I wanted us to is to really call out to one another the greatness, the bigness of God. God is already big. We cannot add to His grandeur. But when we call out to one another his bigness, his greatness, and his grandeur, we make him big in the midst of us. We make him big in our circumstances. We make him big in every situation that we are facing. Amen. Do you guys believe that? Because we know that God is already big. And when we speak for them, when we declare, when we proclaim his bigness and his greatness and his grandeur, we are telling him, God, and we are telling each other, you know, this is my God. This is how big my God is. This is how good my God is. This is how majestic our God is. And with the power of our voices, like the angels, like the seraphims in heaven, in the throne room, the place was shaken. It trembled. And so in the same way when we worship this morning, let the power of our praises shake this place. Let the power of our praises shake the atmosphere and change the atmosphere. Let the power of our praises change us from the inside out. Let the power of our praises just glorify God, magnify His name. So really, I wanted us to bring into this place of praise. Just give all the glory and the praises from your lips, 
from your hearts. It is not about the loudness of the song, but it is about your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. We all know that. We all say that. But today, when you say it, when you sing it, sing it with faith. Sing it with faith. Let faith arise in this place this morning. Because without faith, we cannot really please God. And so this morning, let us just give everything that is within us. Let us set our hearts on Jesus. Let, our, let us set our affections to God. We are believing that God is in this place right now. That in the presence of God, changed from glory to glory in the presence of God there is joy there is peace there is love there is healing us to go like what you did with Isaiah. Our lives will be a demonstration and a living and a walking advertisement of your word, of who you are, Jesus, in our lives. portion anointing that you are about to pour out upon your people in this place. As we lift up our voices, as we call out praises, always as we call out worship, adoration to you, Jesus.
you are here, moving in our midst, touching our hearts, moving in our mind and in our soul, working in this place. I worship you.
worship you and honor you. Worship you. For you are here, Lord. You are here in the midst of us. And we acknowledge your presence. That you're not just a religious thing. But that you are real. You are God. You are here. And you are here to change our lives. You are here to change the way we think, the way we speak, the way we believe. We are here to be changed to the, in the way we worship, in the way we approach your holiness. We are here coming in your presence, acknowledging that you are here to do a miracle in our lives. Amen. To deliver us, to set us free that we may give you honor and glory and praise and thanksgiving. For God, you deserve it. You deserve everything that we can ever give you. You deserve it. No reservation. With such freedom, Lord God, with everything that we can ever give you that we did not necessarily own anyway, but that everything we are, you've given to us. Help us not to withhold anything from you. Help us to freely give back to you every area of our hearts, every area of our lives, everything that we are keeping away from you. Let us have the freedom to give it up to you, Amen. to give it up for you, Lord God. Yes. Help us to be free from religion, and being religious, Lord God, and help us to be free. To be free and to be, Lord God, just willing to know you for the truth of who you are. You are God. And besides you, there is nobody else. Let us let it be a reality to us. In Jesus' name. Cause I want to see you Lord, I We want to see you, Jesus. 
for who you really are in spirit and in truth. And so we pray today, reveal to us yourself individually. Come face to face. Come breathe on us. In the same way as you have spoken to Moses in the mountain, breath to breath, face to face, mouth to mouth, you have breath upon him today. Reveal yourself to me. Say that to you. To me. Not as a corporate yet, but to me individually. For Lord, as we have a revelation of who you are, we will never be the same. We will be changed from one glory to the next infinite glory. We have a desperate need to see you. Because when we see you, we will definitely be changed. We will be free. We will be delivered. We will, Lord God, be removed from the placement of earth to the placing of heaven. Deliver us today, Lord God. Deliver us today. Set us free from our erroneous conception of who you are. Wrongful understanding of what you have come for. That you're not just a healer, you're not just a savior, but you are an almighty God and you're coming back. You are returning as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you're coming back for a glorious church. And we want to be your bride. We want to see that paradigm. We want to have a revelation of your bride, of being a bride, of being prepared for you, to being married to you, to being there ready for that wedding supper. But being ready to bring judgment with you, to being ready, to be ready, Lord God, to stand with you in that eternity. I want to see you. This is a cry, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see this. I want to see you, your beauty. I want to see your splendor. I want to see your majesty. I want to see the glory and the glorious presence that you carry, that you reflect upon us. You reflect upon your people. That you are beautiful beyond imagination, beyond our mind could ever comprehend. So unless you open our heart, unless you open our eyes, spiritualized we will not be able to rightly and accurately see you for who you are so even as we sing Lord even as we say this give us reality give us the consciousness give us the desperation to really know you for who you are
Yeah. 
like thunder. The sound of your voice sets us free like thunder. The falls are given birth to like thunder. The sound of your voice, Lord God, will set us free. Will bring a command in the innermost part of our being. That every confusion will be destroyed by the sound of your voice. By the beauty of your presence. By the fire of your eyes. And by the wisdom that is upon your head. You are beautiful, Lord. And we want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you in the beauty of your holiness. This is our desire to see your beauty, to see the splendor of your face. Open our eyes now, open our hearts now, open our ears that we may feel. Your sound deliver us and free us today. You're beautiful.
Building our hearts. 
this for four years to know you to love you to trust you and to follow you to allow what you're singing to flow through your hands to the person next to you. And let them be strengthened. Let them be encouraged. Let them be emboldened. And even let change come. 
let change happen right now. There is nothing more important than when we walk as a body, when we allow our lives to be a change for others, when we allow our obedience to affect and bring an impact to a city, to a nation, to a community, to a population, but more than anything, for someone's life to be changed because you love them, because you love God, because He is your strength, He's your shield, He is the rock to which you stand on, and that you believe that forever, all your days, you will love Him.
being delivered even now as you say I love you Lord forever all my days I will love you God you are set to being free from doubt from unbelief from fear Thank you. 